Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Chai, Bahasham, Rachahakurash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And uh, I wanted to go into Daniel, the eighth chapter, as you see the title. And uh, ultimately, I was um, watching this video by the elder apostle Tahar. Um, the origins of the alphabet ABC comes from Hebrew and other topics. His uh, channel, GMS, declaring the end, subscribe, be edified. And this is a very edifying video that brothers uh, and sisters should watch. Um, you know, the, uh, the, the term alphabet itself, all right, is rooted in the Hebrew alphabet, all right, as you have alaf, bat, alphabet. All right. Um, it all goes back to the ancient Hebrew language. All right. And he goes into that and other things in this video. Um, but at a particular point in this video, he um, spoke about someone asking him about Daniel, the eighth chapter. And he asked if a brother could go into it. So I pulled up some of my notes and uh, I decided, hell, why not? going to it uh and fight these infirmities <laughs> uh and overcome death as i tell the brothers so i'm going to get into daniel the eighth chapter which is a, a prophetic book uh wherein uh there's a lot of history that you have to go into and know and understand uh but hopefully we can get some edification and uh you brothers and sisters learn because that's the purpose of us doing these videos now when you read uh, Daniel, the uh, eighth chapter is dealing with the vision of the ram and the goat. And as we uh, go into this, you'll understand who and what those represent. Now, this is Daniel, the eighth chapter in the first verse. It says, in the third year of the reign of Belshazzar, okay, which was a descendant of Nebuchadnezzar, all right, it calls him his son, but I believe it was like his uh, great grandson or something of that sort. I'm not a uh, hundred percent sure. I have to look it up, but I know Belshazzar came from the line of Nebuchadnezzar. All right, which those are titles as well. All right, you can just have one Nebuchadnezzar. There was um, a few, but they all succeeded one another. And um, at the end of the Babylonian Empire, you had Belshazzar. OK, which was ruling during the time of Daniel, the fifth chapter where you have the writing on the wall. OK, where uh, Daniel let them know their kingdom was getting ready to fall into the hands of the uh, Persians and the Medes. OK, and you can read that history in Daniel, the fifth chapter. OK, and this is the Neo-Babylonian Empire. It's not Babylon the Great. Again, in the Holy Scriptures, you have uh, Babel, which was started by Nimrod. You can get that history in uh, Genesis uh, 10 and 11. That's where you have the Tower of Babel. And then you have the Neo-Babylonian Empire, all right, um, which Daniel was within that captivity. And then in prophecy, you have Babylon the Great, which is America. All right, so this is during the time of the Neo-Babylonian Empire, at the end of it. In the third year of the reign of Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, which is our forefather. All right. He's uh, of the loins and lineage <laughs> of David. He's of the uh, king's lineage. When you go into prophecy, um, remember Isaiah told King Hezekiah. All right. That uh, the sons which show uh, issue from him. All right, shall be taken away and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. All right. And by eunuchs, it doesn't mean their rods were chopped off, but ultimately they were taken into captivity and used. All right. Uh, by the kings of Babylon, you know, um, to help them learn particular things about our culture and so forth. All right. And you can read about Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego so forth in the book of Daniel okay and they refused 
to eat the king's meat, all right, the uh, lion's den, you know, the uh, three holy children. Those were all descendants of David through Hezekiah, which were in captivity in Babylon. Just a uh, history point. So let's go back here in Daniel 8 and 1. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at the first. All right. He received many visions. Um, Daniel, the seventh chapter is a vision. OK. Um, it says, and I saw in a vision and it came to pass when I saw I was at Shushan in the palace, which is in the province of Elam. And I saw a vision and I was by the river of Eli. All right. And you can look that up on biblical maps. It was said of the, these waters were amazing, like to drink when you read about uh, these these waters. But pretty much this is a vision and he's uh, in this particular region. All right. And verse three says, and I lifted up uh, mine eyes and saw and behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns and the two horns were high but one was higher than the other and the higher came up last this is speaking of the medial persian empire all right which took down the babylonians okay now in the vision prior in daniel the seventh chapter okay um this uh particular kingdom is likened unto a bear all right, this is Daniel 7 and 5, and, be, and I beheld another beast and a second like unto a bear, and it raised itself up on one side, and it had three ribs in its mouth, uh, which is uh, Babylon, Lydia, Egypt, these different regions wherein they conquered. All right, and the higher side of this particular beast was the Persians. All right, the uh, Medes ruled first. All right. But uh, the Persians, all right, became the, you know, more voluptuous of the two, okay? And um, they conquered. As you see here, it had three ribs in its, uh, between the teeth of it. And they said, thus arise and devour much flesh, all right? Ultimately, this is the uh, Persians and the Medes, all right, which in Daniel, the fifth chapter, okay, as... Belshazzar and the Babylonians were having a feast, okay? Um, they were at a party and, you know, a particular writing came on the wall and Daniel interpreted it, all right? And ultimately the interpretation was that the kingdom was going to be divided and given unto the Medes and the Persians, okay? And that happened, okay? The Babylonian Empire fell to the Medes and the Persians. Okay, so this is what this ram represents. Okay, and um, Daniel, the uh, eighth chapter and the third verse. Okay, and the horns being high represents power, wealth, authority. All right, and the Medes ruled uh, first. All right, but the second became higher, which is through Cyrus. All right. And then um, eventually Darius. All right. You can read that history and we'll get into some of it. Um, so this is what that's talking about in Daniel, the uh, eighth chapter and the third verse is speaking of the medial Persian Empire. All right. And the one that was higher would be the Persians. OK. In verse four, it says. And I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward. So that no beast might stand before him. Neither was there any that can deliver out of his hand. But he did according to his will and became great. And remember, this is all through the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai that these nations rule. Remember, what's that Daniel 4? And you can um, go into the uh, history of what we're reading about in the movie uh, 300. All right. They conquered Babylon, Syria, Asia part of greece okay egypt ethiopia india lydia okay they were they they were they were fierce all right and remember that was the empire in which the israelites were uh granted 
a decree, all right, by Cyrus to rebuild the temple. All right, this is Daniel uh, 4 and 17. This matter is by the degree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent, all right, that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and give it, it to whomsoever he will and set it up over it, the basis of men. And right now, all right, the world is being ran by the basis of men. Okay. And all of these heathen are ultimately under us, but the heavenly father is fair. Okay. When you go into prophecy, he allowed these particular heathen to have their rulership, their time in the planet earth where they dominated. So no one could say that Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is unfair. It's just that the final kingdom that's going to be set up according to Daniel, the second chapter, Daniel, the seventh chapter is the kingdom of the Israelites. Yahweh Shai's kingdom on earth through the, the, the power of the most high God, Yahweh, the sons of God under the second Adam are going to be the final rulers forever of this earth, which is the only way that it will prosper into 100 percent righteousness. OK, so this is speaking of how the, uh, the, the you, know, you know, the Medes and the Persians went and conquered. All right. The heavenly the, the spirit was on them. All right. And meanwhile, we were <laughs> back in Jerusalem rebuilding the temple. OK, now and they became great. Let's see here, let me look at my notes and see if there's anything I'm missing. Um, now, nah, that's pretty much it. All right. And Cyrus pretty much, if you notice, it doesn't uh, mention um, the east because Cyrus came from the east. Okay. And he conquered westward, northward, and southward. Okay. Let's see here. Let's go to the uh, next verse, Daniel 8 and 5. It says, and as I was considering, behold, a he-goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth, and he touched not the ground, speaking of the swiftness of the Greek empires, headed by Alexander, all right, the uh, great, the creep, all right, or whatever you want to call him, okay, the, and the he goat had a notable horn between his eyes and horns represent, you know, power, you know, strength. All right. And how people pretty much bow themselves to him because they were so swift. As a matter of fact, when you go to Daniel, the uh, seventh chapter. All right. This uh, particular beast, the Greeks is likened unto a leopard. OK, Daniel seven and six. And after this, I beheld and lo, another like a leopard which had upon the back of it four wings. And those are the four generals who ultimately um, reigned after Alexander died. And we'll get into that. All right. And dominion was given unto it. So it's likened unto a leopard because leopards are very swift in prophecy. When it speaks of, you know, uh, the uh, modern day Chaldeans, Babylon, the great, it likens them unto a leopard, a very swift all right. And Alexander pretty much did all of his conquering. All right. Within six to eight years, he conquered what he believed was the whole world, although there was more. And there was a point where he conquered so much that there was no more to conquer. And he start crying. OK, you can look all of that up in history. But Alexander was great. And we know. Right after that, that, uh, you know, it called it a ram and then you eight, but. In Daniel, the uh, seventh chapter, they call it a bear that lifted itself up on one side. OK, the next empire to rule was the leopard, the Greeks. OK, so that's what this is speaking of in Daniel. All right. The. Uh, eighth chapter. Let's read it again. Daniel eight and five. OK. And as I was as I was considering, behold. A he goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground, meaning he was swift in how he conquered. All right. And the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. OK, and that's Alexander the uh, Great. And you can read this history in the book of First Maccabees, the first chapter. OK. Um, and immediately, what does it start out saying? All right. 
first Maccabees 1 and 1. And it happened after that Alexander, the son of Philip the Macedonian, all right, which these are Edomites who were conquering, okay, and even uh, uh, Philip's father, they were, they were already conquering, okay. But this is the beginning of the Edomite beast system. It starts with the Greeks, okay, and it says, and it happened that after Alexander, the son of Philip the Macedonian, came out of the land of Chittim, had smitten Darius the king, all right, of the Persians and Medes, all right. Now he himself, as we'll uh, show you in uh, history, didn't, uh, uh, you know, put the sword to Darius, but it was his by his force, you know. Ultimately, one of uh, Darius's, I believe it was his cousin. Uh, he pretty much uh, wounded Darius, and eventually, as the Greeks were pressuring. You know the, uh, the 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 medio Persian Empire. All right, they they were like, we need to surrender. But Darius, you know, um, and Alexander were having, you know, uh, pretty much back and forth via letters, and none of the flattery that they were offering Alexander. All right, worked. Alexander had a had it on his mind to conquer. He didn't want to join empire. He wasn't taking any marriages. He wasn't taking part of the kingdom. He wanted the whole kingdom. All right. And eventually Darius, by the force of Alexander, died. All right. And we'll get a little bit of that history in a minute. But he smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes, that he reigned in his stead first over Greece. And he made many wars and won many strongholds and he slew the kings of the earth. And he went through the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations inasmuch that the earth was quiet before him, whereupon he was exalted and his heart was lifted up. The pride of thine heart. This is an Edomite. Now, mind you, when Alexander came into power, okay, the uh, Israelites, as we'll show you, uh, he didn't put too much hell on them. All right. Pretty much they were like a vassal. He allowed the Jews. He was intrigued by the Jews. One of the high priests, according to the book of Josephus, showed him, all right, that he was written in prophecy. So he had uh, respect for the Jews, okay, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, all right, um, pretty much who were primarily in, you know, Jerusalem at that time, all right, he had a respect for him, he didn't put too much hell in him, and we're going to show you eventually through Antiochus that hell came, so it says he gathered a mighty stronghold and ruled over countries, kings, and nations who became tributaries unto him. OK, and eventually he died. So we'll go back to this. Let's go back to Daniel, the eighth chapter. OK. So Alexander took down, OK, uh, the uh, the Persians and the Medes. He got control of Babylon, Egypt, and he did this in about six to eight years. So it was like, whoa. All right. The, the, the you know, the spirit was on him. Now, remember. Esau is blessed with the sword, all right? So his ability to conquer wasn't by his own might, but it was through the inspiration and power of the Most High God, Yahweh, all right, that he had this power. Remember, Isaac, okay, blessed your ass with the sword, okay? So you were given this sword for prophecy's sake, okay? So as we go to... Uh, uh, verse 6, let's read uh, 5 again. It says, And as I considered, behold, a he goat came from the west to fit, uh, of the face of the whole earth, and he touched not the ground, and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. That's Alexander. And he came to the ram, which had two horns, the medial Persian Empire, all right, which I had seen standing before the river, all right, and they were great in power, okay? Darius pretty much was royal. He was majestic, all right? And he thought he was in good cause because pretty much there was rivers that separated uh, Greece, <laughs> all right, from his empire. It was some notable rivers that ultimately Darius like, they ain't going to get through that. But there was a spirit on Alexander, and they got through the rivers and eventually came to his empire and took it, Okay? So he came to the ram, 
all right, the medial Persian Empire that had two horns, which has seen standing before the river and ran into him in the fullness of his power. All right, he ran into him, meaning the 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 army of the Greeks, as we read, they 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 smit, they had smitten Darius and his army. Okay. And they took many spoils. All right. So this is what that's talking about in Daniel the eighth chapter. All right. In the uh, sixth verse. So he ran into him, meaning he, he pretty much got through those rivers and took down that empire and it became under his dominion. Verse seven. And I saw him come close to the ram and he was moved with choler against him. All right. And when you look up the word choler, it just means anger. So look up that word Kohler because they were sending letters back and forth to one another. Let me see here. Darius and Alexander. Bitterness. You see that, that, that word Mara. Anywhere you see that, all right, that's bitterness. Marar, to be bitter, to show bitterness, to be enraged. There was a spirit on Alexander like, nah, we taking these niggas down. And I, um, found you know some little bit of history you can look it up i'm not gonna go all into it um you know just to get through the breakdown but alexander the great's letter to the persian king darius okay it says a lot we know about alexander the great comes from the great greek philosophers uh Plut Plut plutarch and arian all right both of them were born centuries after Alexander died. All right. And you can also get the history of Alexander from the Holy Scriptures. All right. And it's funny. Everybody acknowledges Alexander as a real person who existed. All right. And he doesn't have as even close to as many manuscripts as the, the, the Old and New Testament. All of these people, you know, Yahweh Shai, the disciples were, you know, um, fake mythical you know characters that were created but alexander who has less manuscripts is somehow uh, uh a real person but yahweh shai the disciples who as well by roman <laughs> philosophers and historians were, were were stated to be real people but for some reason now they're fake even in those particular councils nicaea and the, the, those councils they never you know uh not once did they say Yahweh Shai was fake or he wasn't a real person. They were just discussing his divinity. But here in these times, people say that Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, was a fake individual and made up. All right. But those same people will say Alexander. OK. And a lot of the Roman emperors were real, which they can. Some of those can be found in the, the, the scriptures anyway. It says, uh, however, historians consider their work very reliable. All right. It says, keep in mind that let's go back to 333 B.C. when the Battle of Issus was fought, which is one of the, uh, you know, the Syrian, dealing with the Syrian wars. And we'll get into that, you know, where pretty much, you know, Alexander battled Alexander and his army with very little took down the medial Persian Empire, okay? And I believe the first was called the Battle of Issus, okay? It says, um, when the Battle of Issus was fought between the Macedonian king Alexander and the great, the, the, uh, and the Persian Emperor Darius III, both sides faced ma a massive number of casualties during the battle, all right? But the, the more casualties that were uh, lost were on the side of the Persians. It says, but despite being outnumbered and facing tremendous re resistance, Alexander, armed with the sword, spear, and adrenaline, pretty much the spirit of the Lord was upon him. Okay? Remember, even uh, uh, Cyrus, even the, 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 the Medio Persian Empire was set up by the Lord. Cyrus was called the Lord's anointed. Okay? He was anointed to allow us to rebuild the temple. Anyway, it says, pushed through the gaps and got really close to Darius. Alexander's fearlessness and confidence gave goosebumps to Darius, and he fled the battle. The Macedonian army uh, chased their fleeing enemy until the sun went down. 
However, they failed to arrest Darius alive because it was Darius's either his cousin or his uh he was the uncle. I forget the dude's name. Um Cassis or I forget his name. I have it somewhere written. Bessus. B E S S U S that, you know, when you go into history it's a different accounts, but pretty much the force of the Greeks, you know, had you know, uh, uh, Darius, his man saying, look, let's submit to these people. And Darius was, you know, he was like, hell no, nah, I'm not submitting. I'll offer him this. I'll offer him that. And they were sending letters back to one another. And the letters were, you know, made Alexander pissed. And eventually Bessus, who was related to Darius, had one of his men wound Darius. And eventually, as the Greeks kept conquering, they found him. So when you read in 1 Maccabees 1 and 1, all right, when it says Alexander smitten, had smitten Darius, it was just really his force, okay, that as they continued conquering and conquering, all right, pretty much the uh, the Persians and the Medes, they gave up. And Darius was being proud. He was like, hell no, I'm not, you know, submitting. But one of his own men pretty much uh, uh, took put the sword to him and when the Greeks found him he was pretty much already dead you can look that up in history but anyway let's go back here um it says but Darius his family was captured by Alexander um yep his wife his children his riches <laughs> it says after losing the battle in his family Darius realized who he had offended and sought truce to protect himself all right, his family and his remaining empire, but Alexander wasn't having it. All right, it says here, Darius wrote to Alexander fir first. He requested the release of his family and asked Alexander to be his ally and stop the war. All right, so you can read, you know, upon this, but pretty much Alexander wasn't having it. It was a spirit on him, as you can read here in Daniel the uh, eighth chapter in the seventh verse, he was moved with Kohler. Okay, he was like, "Hell nah, I want it all." All right, the the the, uh, the brand new socks, draws, everything. I want the whole kingdom. I'm not taking any uh, a part. I'm not taking any deal. So as they were sending letters back and forth, eventually the Greeks kept conquering, and Darius fled. And eventually one of his own men took him out. Daniel 8 and 7. And I saw him come close to the ram, the Medio persian Empire, which at this time Darius was the man. And he moved with Kohler against him, bitterness. And he smote the ram and brake his two horns. He took down the Medio persian territory and it became his. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him. Okay. The Medio Persian Empire could not deal with the force of the Greeks. Okay, but he cast them down to the ground and stamped upon him. I right, mean, and their military overcame them. Okay, and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. Okay, none of the allies that Darius had. Okay, not one of them could pretty much help him. All right, and that happened in three battles. All right. The uh, first um, uh, one of them was at Issus. Uh, the other one was at uh, the river Granicus. OK. And the third was uh, at Gaugamala. All right. And these are known as the Syrian Wars, I believe, which you can read some of those as well. in Daniel, the uh, 11 chapter, it goes into some of that history. All right. And during these wars. All right, uh, you know, D uh, Darius's mom, children, and riches that he had in Damascus and Syria were eventually confiscated and taken. And eventually he died. Okay? So, and you can look up that history with Bessus wounding Darius. As a matter of fact, let's see here. Here. 
asbestos killed Darius. You know, it's different accounts, but pretty much when you do the, the research and the study, you'll find out that Bessus, who was um, related to Darius, he was pleading with Darius to just surrender, okay? Let's see here. Yep, Bessus fleeing from the pursuing Macedonian forces. Bessus and the rebels carried Darius III in a covered wagon reportedly in golden chains in order to buy some time for their escape. Bessus and his co-conspirators killed Darius and left his body by the road. The murder took place near Hecomptolus in 330 B.C., showing you that the Bible was on point with the history. All right. Let's see. You can read more of that history, you know, but um, it was Bessus that really uh, was responsible for Darius's death. And Bessus, um was, um, and you could just read that. Uh, just look it up if you want to learn more. But to get through the uh, breakdown, Daniel, uh, Eight and eight, okay, and it says, therefore, the he goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken because Alexander the uh, Great died. Some say of malaria, some say he was poisoned. Now, malaria, which is a viral infection, um, was something that a lot of people around that time were dying of, okay, but some people say Alexander was poisoned. Either way, according to prophecy, um, in the history, 1 Maccabees 1 and 5, and after these things, Alexander fell sick and perceived that he should die. Wherefore, he called his servants, such as were honorable, and had been brought up with him from his youth, and he parted his kingdom among them while he was alive. So Alexander reigned 12 years and then died. So when he was at the height of his power, he eventually died and he parted his kingdom while he was on his deathbed amongst all right his four generals all right and going back here daniel 8 and 8 therefore the he goat waxed very great alexander and when he was strong the great horn was broken he died and for it came and for it came up four notable ones all right towards the four winds of heaven all right. And this is the four generals that we always talk about. And you can look up the history of the uh, Diadochi. OK, the Diadochi, which ultimately, in a nutshell, Lysimaeus. OK. Um, Cassander. Now, Lysimaeus, he pretty much took Asia. Cassander um, took Macedonia, you know, Greece. Ptolemy, we know he took Egypt and Seleucus uh, took Asia. All right, but there was another name, Antigono, uh, Antigonus, all right, who was uh, first ruling over Macedonia in the Greece area. But I believe Seleucid, along with one of the other generals, helped take him down. And these Edomites were divided. They didn't never agree. They had wars amongst themselves. Okay, so you can look up the history of the Diadochi. Okay. Or the Diadochi, <laughs> which uh, ultimately are the successors after Alexander's death. All right. If you want to learn more about that, you can look that up. OK. And that's the four horns that ruled after Alexander's death. And it talks about this also in Daniel, the seventh chapter. OK. Daniel seven. And six, and after this I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast also had four heads, and dominion was given unto it. And this is speaking of the Greeks, which was headed by Alexander the Great. All right, when he died, his four generals uh, took root. All right, and what happened? <laughs> As a matter of fact, let's go to uh, First Maccabees chapter... Um, one and seven so alexander reigned 12 years and died 
and his servants bear rule, everyone in his place. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. They all wanted to be the king, that we would fight one another. So did their sons after them many years, and evils were multiplied in the earth. And evils were multiplied in the earth. Okay? When the wicked bear rule, all right, uh, uh, wickedness is forwarded. Okay? Now, when Alexander was alive, things were more in order. After he died, all right, they uh, began to wax worse and worse. All right, so um, that's Daniel 8 and 8. Now we're going to jump to Daniel 8 and 9, the little horn, okay, which ultimately is an extension of Alexander's empire through those four beasts, okay, through those four generals, should I say. All right, um, and this is going to speak of the one who came out of the Seleucid. So this is um, Daniel 8 and 9, and out of one of them, all right, remember you had uh, Lysimaeus, Cassander, Ptolemy, and Seleucid. Out of one of them, out of the Seleucid, okay, empire, okay, came forth a little horn which waxed exceeding great. All right, and this is speaking of Antiochus Epiphanes. All right, um, Antiochus the uh, fourth. Okay, and um, let's see here. And he waxed exceeding great towards the south. All right, um, and that's pretty much Egypt, all right, south of Syria. All right, he even fought against uh, Ptolemy. All right, he besieged, all right, uh, Alexandria, all right, but Rome sent aid pretty much, and he was stopped of that campaign, all right, and um, then he went east, you know, Armenia, you know, Persia, Mede, all right, and the countries beyond the Euphrates, all right, and he pretty much took them down and made them tributaries. I think you can see that in First Maccabees chapter 3. And 31 gives you a little bit of that history. Okay. First Maccabees 3 and 31. Wherefore being greatly perplexed in his mind. Because ultimately he was stopped of that campaign in Egypt. All right. He determined to go into Persia. There to take the tributes of the countries and to gather much money. All right. So he left Lysias, a nobleman one of the blood of the royal to oversee the affairs of the kingdom from the river Euphrates unto the borders of Egypt. All right. And to bring up his son Antiochus until he came again. So he put, all right, his particular, uh, the men that were with him, you know, over these regions. All right. And pretty much what he did next. All right. As you read Daniel, the eighth chapter, Okay, as he went towards the pleasant land, which the pleasant land is the the promised land, pretty much. All right, it's starting at Jerusalem. Okay, where the Jews were. All right, and you can read that history because you the, the, a lot of history is repeated in Maccabees. So you can read that history in First Maccabees chapter one. Okay, in ten. Okay. And there came out of them a wicked root out of the Seleucid Empire, Antiochus the fourth, surname Epiphanes, son of Antiochus the king, who had been hostage at Rome. All right, he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventh year of the kingdom of the Greeks. Okay, so and we'll go back here, but that's what it means. All right, um, Daniel 8 and 9, and they came out of them a little horn, which waxed exceeding great. All right. That's Antiochus the fourth, Epiphanes. All right. And he waxed great towards the south and towards the east, and he eventually went towards the pleasant land, which is where the Jews dwelt, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi primarily. Okay. And what did he do there? All right. Wickedness. He first came with flatteries, 
All right. But eventually the Hellenization campaign started. All right. Now, remember when Alexander the Greek was alive, you know, pretty much you go into the history. He allowed the Jews to pretty much keep their customs. As a matter of fact, I pulled this up. Um, persecution of the Jews um, dealing with Antiochus. The fourth, it says the Seleucids, like the Ptolemies before them, held a very held a suzerainty over Judea. All right, and when you look up this word, a suzerainty is a relationship in which one state, all right, or other polity controls the foreign policy in relations of a tributary state while allowing the tributary state to have internal autonomy. The dominant state is called the su the suzerain, all right? Pretty much you're a vassal, okay? Now, before, all right, uh, Antiochus IV came, you know, the Jews were, all right, like a vassal, all right, but they were able to keep their customs when Antiochus came, all right, as we read in uh, 1 Maccabees 1 and 10, he was a wicked root. OK, and you can read about the rest of what happened as far as him, you know, by flatteries, ultimately causing friction and eventually sacking the temple, coming in there, stealing things, causing uh, friction between the priest, doing the wickedness that Esau is known to do. He t eventually, the daily sacrifice was taken away and we'll get to that. But uh, reading this. All right. Uh, the Seleucids, like the Ptolemies before them, held a suzerainty over Judea. They respected the Jewish culture and protected the Jewish in institutions. All right. This policy was drastically reversed by Antiochus IV, seemingly after what was either a dispute over leadership in the temple in Jerusalem and the office of high priest. All right. Because... You had a high priest at the time by the name of Onias, all right, which you can read the history of him in, you know, the first and second Maccabees, um, who wasn't down with the Hellenization. But he had a relationship, you know, with some of the Seleucid Empire, which eventually became to his detriment. And eventually his brother, Jason, was set up, okay? And he allowed and did wickedness, man. OK, it said this triggered a revolt against the rule, the Maccabean revolt. All right. And that's where you can read about that in the book of Maccabees. And the thing is, you have Christians saying that the Apocrypha is null and void. Well, where do you read about the history? All right. Of. All right. We're reading about this history. But where do you where can you read? Where can you expound upon this history? Where can you expound upon? OK, the, the leopard, because remember. These four beasts that we're reading about, according to the book of Zechariah, the first chapter, are responsible for what? This is uh, Zechariah 1 and 18. Then lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, four horns. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, what be these? And he answered me, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. OK, <laughs> so the, the, if these horns, all right, which these are the same four horns or the four beasts that Daniel expounds upon in his vision. Where do we get the history? Because you can go into the Bible and find the history of the Israelites amongst these various beasts. OK. Where do you expound upon? All right. This beast. The third beast that's likened to a leopard, which is the Greeks. You expound upon that by going into the book of Maccabees. You see? Which is a part of the Holy Scriptures. It's the history. You can go into secular history and you can go into the actual Bible. In the book of Maccabees and read about what happened with the Israelites as they were in the Greek captivity. They were Hellenized, which is a big big part of why they eventually became uncircumcised became called gentiles a lot of them all right but you had a remnant of them which resisted 
okay, the uh, the Hellenization. And that's what's called the Maccabean Revolt, which eventually would lead into other histories. All right, Hasmonean dy dynasty and so forth. All right, which is why you had those of the circumcision on the scene. All right, at the time Yahweh came because they were ultimately offsprings of these who resisted and kept to the customs. Okay? So this is where you get Hellenization. All right? The Antiochian crisis of the Jews. These decrees were, were uh, a departure from typical Seleucid practice, which did not attempt to suppress local religions of, in their empire. So before Antiochus Epiphanes came on the scene, all right, you know, the, 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 the Seleucid, all right, although they had power over Judea, okay, they allowed the Jews to keep their religion. They allowed the Jews to keep, you know, their uh, uh, customs, all right? But as we're reading here, Daniel 8 and 9, this, this horn that waxed exceeding great, Antiochus, verse 10, it says, and it waxed great even to the host of heaven, all right, and it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them, all right? And we can get that history, all right, in First Maccabees, all right? And eventually, you had Israelites selling out wicked men who said, basically, let us make a covenant with the heathen, all right? Because things were getting hard, all right? If they saw you playing particular games that brought you back to your culture, if they saw you circumcising your children pretty much you you were you know you were getting rolled on all right so there was particular men that were like look let, we got to sell out we got to we got to you know pretty much let's give ourselves over to their custom so we can live but then you had others you know the maccabean and those who joined themselves into them they were like hell no all right so this device pleased them well Okay, and certain of the people were so forward herein where they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen, wherein they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the customs of the heathen and made themselves uncircumcised. They were still Jews, but they became uncircumcised. All right, which is a big part of why in the New Testament you had Israelites being called the uncircumcision or heathen. Because they forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. Okay? So, now when the kingdom was established before Antiochus, he thought to reign over Egypt that he might have dominion over two realms. So we read the history of how he set up particular of his family members and, you know, particular men that were aligned to him, line, you know, and, and, and set them over these regions but he went to the pleasant land, Jerusalem, to do this wickedness. Okay? So as you keep going down, verse 20, And after that Antiochus had smitten Egypt, he returned again, all right, in the four, forty and third year, and went up against Israel and Jerusalem with a great multitude. And he entered proudly into the sanctuary and took away the golden altar and the candlestick and the vessels thereof and the table of the showbread and the pouring of the vessels and the vows and the senses of gold and the veil and the crown and the golden ornaments were, which were before the temple and he pulled, which he pulled off. So he went in there doing his wickedness, man. Okay. And he took silver and gold and precious vessels. Also, he took the hidden treasures, which he found. Okay, this devil went into the temple doing his thing. Wickedness, man. And had taken, uh, and when he had taken all away, he went into his own land, having made a great massacre, and spoke very proudly. All right. Therefore was a great mourning in Israel in every place. All right. So Jake was, was, was all messed up over what happened, man. Okay. And he eventually came back. Okay, and after two years of Jake was mourning and trying to get themselves together, after two years fully expired, the king sent his chief collector 
a tribute into the cities of Judah who came into Jerusalem with a great multitude. And they spoke peaceable words unto them, but all was deceit. And when they had given him credence, he, he fell suddenly upon the city and smote it very sore and destroyed much people of Israel. All right. And he took spoils. He did his wickedness, man. And you can read about that history. He shed in innocent blood. He defiled the sanctuary. And eventually the, the daily sacrifice was taken away. Okay. In verse 43, yea, many Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. For the king has sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and to the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land and to forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple that they should profane the Sabbath and festival days. So that's what this is talking about. All right. And Daniel Okay, the uh, eighth chapter and the tenth verse. All right. He waxed great even to the host of heaven. All right. Meaning you're in your rulership. All right. When you when it says you're, you're, you reach to the, to the heavens, meaning your, your rulership is great. Okay. But he, he, Esau's even he, he's in the heavens. All right. But he's going to be cast down. All right. And it cast down some of the host and the stars, which are the Israelites, all right, the priesthood, to the ground and stamped upon them, all right? And he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, right? He eventually got to the high priest, okay, in which, you know, Onias was high priest at a particular point, all right? But with the wickedness of the Greeks, he was eventually put to death in a sellout. All right, Onias' brother by the name of Jason set up. Okay, and we know the high priest, all right, in the temple is our connection, all right, to the most high God, Yahweh. Okay, so as you read here, yeah, he magnified himself even to the prince of hosts, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away. All right, remember we had a morning and an evening sacrifice. All right. And the place of his sanctuary was cast down. OK. And that's what they did. They, they sacked the temple. All right. They started offering um, first Maccabees one and forty seven set up altars. All right. Verse forty six. Uh, verse forty five and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple that they should profane the Sabbaths and festival days and pollute the sanctuary and holy people, set up altars and groves and chapels of idols and sacrifice swine's flesh, right? Because they knew the sacrifice was our, our connection to the Most High. So what they did was sacrifice swine's flesh, an unclean beast, knowing those things were not permitted, all right, by the Most High God, Yahweh, okay? So they started doing wickedness and the Greeks love that swine. And you can see that same influence here today. All right. They got you niggas on the commercials, you know, um, promoting McRibs. OK, swines everywhere. OK. And that they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanliness and profanation. So. To the end, they might forget the law and change the ordinances. And that's what happened. That's why in the New Testament, all right, you, you read about these uncircumcision because eventually these children raised their children in this manner. OK, and their children raised their children in this manner. OK, and you had a whole host of the seed of Israel, of Judah, Benjamin and Levi primarily. All right. Who eventually went into the Roman captivity. OK, uncircumcised, weren't following the customs. All right. So this should help you to understand why in the New Testament you see Israelites called heathen, because the whole book tracks the chosen seed. OK, just because at one point they were called heathen and Gentiles and uncircumcision. All right. Doesn't mean it's talking about heathen or actual other nations. No, this is what happened. And it started with Antiochus the fourth epiphanies 
He took away the daily, the daily sacrifice. Okay? So, let's keep going here. Verse 12. And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. All right? And a lot of Jews pretty much helped Antiochus out of fear. They sold out. All right? And pretty much, you know, helped him to do the wickedness he was doing. All right. And it cast down the truth to the ground and it practiced and prospered. All right. And it's speaking of Antiochus and the Greeks at that time. All right. Ultimately doing what they will. All right. Having power. All right. Which who ordained them. All right. The most high. This is prophecy. Okay. It, it sounds harsh, but this is what the most high ordained through the Holy Spirit. Okay, and at that time, pretty much, uh, if you were found practicing the customs of Israel, the law, statutes, and commandments, or if they found, uh, verse 57, as a matter of fact, I'll start at, uh, I'll go to uh, verse 50 it says and whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king all right to break the laws not circumcise your children so forth he should die okay and we're living where hellenization is getting ready to be brought back in a different way via you know the uh, the, the jab and everything else they're coming with if you don't want to live by their you know religion their nwo <laughs> These are going to be the consequences, and these are the times we're coming into. It says, in the selfsame manner, wrote he to his whole kingdom and appointed overseers over all the people, commanding the cities of Judah to sacrifice city by city, to sacrifice uh, a swine and particular leaders of Judah, which that's Judah, Benjamin, and Levi particularly. All right, uh, the, they, they helped, and many of the people were gathered unto them to wit every one that forsook the law and so they committed evils in his land and that's the all right host that was uh given unto him sellouts all right to help the transgression okay and going back to uh then many of the people who were gathered unto them to wit every one that forsook the law and so they committed evils in the land and drove the Israelites into secret places, even whensoever they could uh, flee for succor. All right. They were fleeing for comfort. You had particularly Israelites hiding and sacrificing their children, hiding and practicing, the, you know, keeping the Sabbath, hiding. And if they were found, all right, pretty much they were put to death. It was a crazy time. Okay. It says now in the 15th day of the month of Kassalu, in the Four hundred in the uh, the hundred and forty and fifth year, they set up the abomination of desolation upon the altar. They builded idol altars throughout the cities of Judah on every side. All right, the abomination that make it desolate. Okay, taking away the daily sacrifice, setting up idols in the temple. Okay, cutting off our connection with our power. Okay, and burnt incense at the doors of their houses and in the streets. <laughs> And when they had rent in pieces the books of the law in which they found, they burnt them with fire. And we can see that mindset returning here to Babylon and Great. Now, remember, we're in Rome all over again, but those uh, uh, it was a Greco-Roman empire for a point. So we see remnants of Greek culture and mindset here as well, as you see Jake all right, joining uh, Greek fraternities. That's all a part of Hellenization. It's all back all over again. OK, and you can see there's a, a evil mindset towards the holy book, the laws. All right. Even with this Roe v. Wade thing, now people are, 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 you know, blaming the holy scriptures. They're pissed off. Kicking the Bible, throwing it in the garbage, calling the Bible a book of fairy tales. OK, there's like a, a, a very hard mindset against the scriptures and it's going to get worse. And whosoever was found with any book of the testament 
or if any committed to the law, the king's commandment was that they should be put to death. And they did this by their authority unto the Israelites every month to as many as was, were found in the cities. They were hanging our children by their necks. I believe that's in the uh, second chapter. Okay. But you had particular of the Israelites that weren't there. I'm like, I'm not eating any unclean thing. I'd rather die, all right, than to be defiled with the meats or to profane the covenant. All right. And a very great wrath was upon Israel. And you can read more of the history, but that's what uh, Daniel, the, the, the eight chapter is speaking about. As a matter of fact, let me find it. There's a scripture where they hanged them by the necks. Showing you that these are the Edomites. First Maccabees 1 and 61. And they hanged the infants about the necks and rifled their houses and slew them that had circumcised them. All right. So the hanging by the neck. Right. The Greeks did that back then. And we know that was a big thing for Esau, Edom. All right. In this captivity. OK. So. Going back. To uh, Daniel, the eighth chapter. Let's read 12 again. And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. And it cast down the truth of, uh, to the ground and practice and prospered. OK, and I believe um, Antiochus set up a uh, image or an idol of Jupiter in the temple. OK, which was, oh, my goodness, forbidden. All right. And see, when they're coming at our people, which now is a spiritual temple, when they're coming at our people with all of these idols and all of this wickedness, that's what they're uh, seeking to do to cut us off from our power. But the water, Yahweh Bashmi Shai for a remnant, which is likened to, you know, the, the true spiritual temple, you know, where there's a connection that can't be cut off. OK, now. Verse 13 says, then I heard one saint speaking and another saint said unto uh, that certain saint, saint which spake basically, you know, as he's seeing his vision, he sees two angels speaking to one another. All right. And the question was asked, how long shall the vision concerning? All right. Shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host be trodden underfoot how long is all right uh, uh these devils pretty much gonna you know from the time that they cut off the daily sacrifice all right how long would they be allowed to do this because remember it tells you the time frame of when it started when they set up the abomination that make it desolate uh first maccabees 1 and 54 now the 15th day of the month of Casalu. All right, in the 145th year, they set up the abomination of desolation upon the altar, okay, which some say is an uh, idol to Jupiter, which is one of the gods they worship. All right, remember, uh, Alexander the Great called himself the son of Jupiter. <laughs> All right, um, and we'll get to that in just a minute, but pretty much. The angel answered, it's going to end, Daniel 8 and 14. And he said unto me, unto 2,300 days, then shall the uh, sanctuary be cleansed. All right, which is 2,300 days, which when you add that up, that's about six years and three months. That's how long, all right, that evil and wickedness will be going on. All right. Until the temple was eventually cleansed. All right. In first Maccabees, the fourth chapter via Judas, the uh, Judas, the Maccabees and and those who didn't bow and fought. OK. Um, this is uh, I mean, you could read this whole chapter, but as you can see, they cleanse the sanctuary and bear out the defiled stones. OK. They cleanse the temple. Okay. 
under Judas Maccabees. They made new holy vessels. And when did this happen? All right, in 1 Maccabees 4 and 52. Now on the 5 and 20th day in the ninth month, which is called the month of Casalu, in the 140th and 8th year, they rose up at times in the morning and offered sacrifice according to the law upon the new altar of the burnt offering which they had made. So the temple was cleansed, all right, and it was exactly, all right, in 2,000, all right, in 300 days, all right, which when you look that up, 2,300 days equals six years, all right, in three months. And that's the time frame when you look up from when it started, okay, in 1 Maccabees uh, 1 and 54, and when it ended, in 1 Maccabees 4 and 52, all right? And ironically, you know, they built, uh, 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 they fortified it, okay? And this is where you get the uh, Holy Day Hanukkah, okay? So it says, um, and they offered sacrifice according to the law upon the new altar upon burnt offerings which they had made. Look at what time, what day the heathen had profaned it. The same time they had profaned it is the same time, you know, six years and three months later, all right, where they uh, cleaned it. Even that it was dedicated with songs and cisterns and harps and cymbals. And the people fell upon their faces, worshiping and praising the God of heaven who had given them good success. And so they kept the dedication of the altar eight days. This is why the Feast of Hanukkah, all right, last eight days. And offered burnt offerings with gladness and sacrifice, the sacrifice of deliverance and praise. All right, but it's, it's interesting that when you get to the, the bottom of this, okay, verse 60, it says, And at that time they built it up Mount Sion with high walls and strong towers round about, lest the Gentiles, the actual heathen, should come and tread it down as they had done before. All right, and they set there a garrison. To keep it and fortify Betsura to preserve it that the meat people might have this defense from Idumia, which is the Edomites. Showing you the Greeks that took down the temple, Antiochus, they were Edomites. Okay, and you had Edomites at that time. Some called themselves Edomites, but some went under the term, you know, the Greeks, some went under the term Romans, but the, the, at the end of the day, they were Edomites. That's who it was defended against because that's who took it down. Showing you that the Greeks are Edomites. Okay, which is why these Christians and these Christian Edomites, especially, they don't want nothing to do with the Apocrypha. Okay, so that's what that mean, means. Ultimately, the angel in the vision asked the other angel, How long, all right, are they going to take away the daily sacrifice, all right, and try the, 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 the temple underfoot? Well, he said, All right, uh, 2,000. And 300 days and then shall the sanctuary be cleansed okay so let's keep going and pretty much um, in the rest of the chapter 15 through 27 Daniel is given okay the interpretation of the vision which we gave it all right but let's just read through it and end it off all right the interpretation of the vision Daniel 8 and 15. And when it came to pass, when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning, then behold, there stood before me as an appearance of a man. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of Uli, all right, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Daniel was a high level, you know, brother. All right. Maybe I'll reload uh, one of my favorite lessons uh, when we in class went into Daniel. There's a lot of uh, things to understand about him. It says, so when he came near where I stood and when he came, I was afraid and fell upon my face. But he said unto me, understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. Now, as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep. And on my face uh, toward the ground, but he touched me and set me upright. And he said, Behold, I will make thee to know what shall be 
and the last end of the indignation for at the time appointed the end shall be. All right. And he gave the ram's identity. The ram, as we told you, having two horns are the kings of Media and Persia. OK. Verse uh, 21. And the goat is the king of Grecia. All right. Which pretty much you have a nigga by the name of Jephthah of one body, Yahawashai, who has a branch here in Dallas, who says that Alexander the Greek, OK, was a was a was an Israelite, which is stupid. Anyway, the rough goat is the king of Grecia and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king, which is Alexander, an Edomite. OK. Now that uh, being broken, whereas four stood up for it, the four generals, four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation. All right. But not in his power. All right. And remember, that's the Diadochi, the four generals. All right, Lysimaeus, Cassander, Seleucid, Ptolemy. Okay, it says, and 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 there's other names when you look up the Diadochi that you're gonna see, but th those are the four main ones. It says, in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and speaking dark sentences, sentences shall come, stand up, Antiochus, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. All right, because ultimately it was the Lord that gave him this power and allowed them to rule. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and he'll destroy the mighty and holy people. He took down Israel and through his policy, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. OK, and shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. All right. When you go to first Maccabees one. Remember, they came with flatteries. Okay, it came with uh, flatteries, but eventually they started doing uh, wickedness. Okay, you can read that in this chapter. I don't. We don't have to read it. He came acting as if you know he meant well, but he did what he always is known to do. Just like Biden came with flatteries. Now look. All right, and by peace he shall destroy many, and he shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. OK, he eventually died and he came up against the, the, the temple. And in this time, they have the same mindset. That's why we jump to these prophecies, because ultimately that's talking about what Antiochus did. All right. But we know that which is then is now. And it says in the vision of the evening, evening and morning, which was uh, told is true. Wherefore, shut up the vision for it shall be for many days. And it came to pass, right? <laughs> and Daniel fainted and was sick certain days. Afterward, I rose up and did the king's business. And I was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. But he understood it. And now here we are today to um, break that down for you. So um, I'm pretty sure Apostle Tahar will see uh, that this video was done. But y'all got to check this video out. It was a very good video. Also check out the street speaking uh, from this week end uh where they went into it as well went into particular things um and uh hopefully i'll edify it on to the next shalom